Sports Talk in the Zoom Man Cave. Guys, how are you all doing? It's good to talk to you guys. The good, good. Are great. All right. Hey, there is uh we we uh we have a punishment that will be uh that you may catch on to during this video that each of us has because we lost our stock video. But uh let's hit the sports and let's go from there. And let's start off first with the NBA. You know, they're playing in the bubble. And uh Gilbert, you're my idol, so can you tell us about the NBA a little bit? Thanks, David. I'm fond of you too. Um yeah, I mean, NBA is starting off on Thursday. Clippers and Lakers are going to kick it off. It uh, looks pretty good. I mean, uh, zero so far, zero, uh, zero players have gotten the virus. So I guess they're doing it right. i um, looking forward to that. I don't know if AD is going to play. I think he's got like an eye. So he's got poked in the eye. But um, the Lakers lost two players. They lost Rondo and they lost Avery Bradley. But uh, they ended up replacing them with, um, with Jared Smith. And De Deion Waiters. So I guess they got some floor spacers, you know, so they got some more weapons and toys to play with. Jared Smith looking good. So is Waiters. Uh, so it's going to be exciting. The Lakers are great. Thanks, Charlie. Yeah, yeah they, they are. Good, good observation there, Charlie. You know what I think? Uh, I haven't been watching the games, but I've seen J.R. Smith in, in open gyms and, and I've seen him play in these scrimmages. And, uh, I think it's different when there's no crowd for J.R. Smith. I think it actually makes him a lot better player because I've seen him dominate those, those scrimmages they have within players and stuff when they're by themselves in the gyms. Mm -hmm. But he never plays like that with a crowd. Well, rarely. He has his nights. But, but really, I, like, I think this is going to help him. I think it's going to make him a lot better player. Yeah, I mean, I think the last year, that one uh, sequence that happened where he, he called a timeout and – and he was just all spaced out, you know. Yeah. I think that kind of, you know, the people tend to forget everything that he did in the past because he has big shots. But now you look at the guy and, and he's just like a joke, you know. So here's his time to redeem himself. There's not going to be any fans. He's going to be more focused because he's not going to be looking around. Yeah. So you may be right. You yeah, know, he's, he's, he's going to perform really well. You know who else performs really well? Dak Prescott is the best quarterback in the NFC East by far. Finally, thanks. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good observation also. But, uh, you know, I think one of the reasons that I, I think that uh, Gilbert has all this knowledge on the NBA, he watches it quite a bit. That's why we kind of refer to him, and, and really that's why you're my idol. So that, uh, is there anything else that we really have to talk about in the NBA? I don't know, but the Lakers do have LeBron James, and that guy's the GOAT, so they have to win everything. I'm glad you finally think so. Wow. <laughs> He's coming around. He's coming around. <laughs> That's amazing. But you know that AD is also helping out there a lot. So AD is great. Once they become Lakers, I don't know what happens. They just <laughs> I'm, really good. I, I'm telling you guys. Uh, hey, another thing that I want to think about, I want to talk about is that uh, Le LeBron has really, really benefited from AD. AD is leading the Lakers in almost every single category except for assists. So, I mean, he, he's up there also with the MVP uh, consideration as right. far and also uh, defensive player of the year. Yeah. I think, LeBron's, I think LeBron's the MVP and, and AD is the defensive player of the year. Yeah. They're, they're that good. It's amazing. That's pretty good. Well, let's, let's move on from that bubble because it's going to really heat up here very soon. And we're going to be talking a lot of NBA uh, soon. But let's go on to uh, – let's talk about Mahomes. Uh, he just made a, a very good investment possibly into the Kansas City Royals. Carlos, did you see that? And what do you think about that? I did see that. And he has a lot more money to play with now. He has some new money coming in. So I think that's a really good move because that's going to kind of set him up. You know, he's going to be making money off that. He's an owner of a, of a franchise now. So I think that's a really good move. And, and you know, he's, he's, he has set his, his place in the NFL. He's the best quarterback right now. Besides, of course, Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott's way better than him. You know, but other than that, he's, he's making big. I'm moves. glad you see it my way now, Carlos. <laughs> he's, make, he's making big moves with this money. Like owning the team is a big deal. Yeah. yeah. That, not only that, he's probably going to push for a salary cap, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to see from the other side now. Money. Now that he's on that side of it, right? It's like, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it was a good idea to put the, the face of Kansas City, you know, to put him as the ownership of the baseball team. The baseball team kind of needs more help 
with the economy. And he, maybe he got in there cheap too, you know, with the, with the way things are going. So I think they did a good move of getting the face of the city, which is Mahomes now. He's also young. He's going to be around for a long time, uh, you know, bearing any injury. So I think they did a good job of getting that guy into all the ownership early. You know, uh, he grew around. He grew up around baseball because his dad was a pro player. So his dad, I believe his dad was a pro player like for 11 years or so. So he grew up around baseball and good baseball player himself and a very good move to get into a professional team, to buy into a professional team like that. Yeah. I really agree. That's yeah. great. That was, a, that was a good investment move. And Carlos, you talking about your uh, buckets and everything, he put a, a big part of his bucket into that savings, didn't he, with, with that investment? Yes, he did. He has a lot more money to put in there than I do. Yeah. <laughs> it was but one one thing that I can't get out of my mind is like LeBron being the GOAT and making right. a mark, yeah. You, you think the Lakers are just fantastic right now, or what do you think? I, I really think so. The Lakers look unstoppable. <laughs> yeah, so, too. Um, you know, but talking about uh, Major League Baseball, we had the Marlins, 17 players tested for COVID. So, does that kind of put a stopper on the whole baseball season or what's going on there honestly like they should stop the season the way they the way they started this whole thing was just a mistake they still have the teams traveling from city to city they really don't have any preventative measures obviously the, the guys are going out and getting infected infecting other teams infecting their teammates so the way they did this i don't like the way they did it they should have followed the nba the way they did it and the good thing about this the good thing about this is that the NFL can see all this and take some notes and see what works and doesn't work. Yeah. And maybe they can get their season started correctly. But even at that, the bubble, we saw what happened with, what's his name, Lou Williams, right? Yeah. Um, He's the one that went to buy wings? Yeah, wings. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. And wings. Anyway, yeah, I, don't like go, way, go ahead. I don't like the way baseball started this, and I think they need to stop. Right. The, uh, and I, I, I agree with you, but let me, let me just kind of uh, defer over to, to my idol, Gilbert, and see what he thinks. Gilbert, what do you think as the uh, last word on this thing? Yeah, no, uh, they're kind of like the guinea pigs, I guess, the, the NBA and the MLB. The MLB is doing it all, all wrong. But in a way, it was kind of a good thing because, you know, Florida is already inf infested with all, the, with all these uh, people getting the virus. At the same time, the Philadelphia Phillies played them. They were in the same field. Right after the game, they tested every single Philadelphia Philly. None of them got it. So it, it might be a good adjustment period where, like, at least they can say that if you have some players that, are, that have the virus, even though you're in the same field, that doesn't mean they're gonna, you're going to infect their team. So, so that's something to think about as well. Yeah. So, you know, Gilbert, I just want you to know that you're my idol. <laughs> Thanks, David. I'm, it's too much love. Thanks. <laughs> And, uh, let's, let's move on from MLB. Uh, Tyson, Mike Tyson might be fighting Jones, man. That uh, that's gonna be the battle of the 50 year olds. Battle uh, of the 50 year olds. What do you think, Charlie? Well, the way that I see it, I think Mike Tyson is the baddest 50 year old there is out there, except for LeBron. I know LeBron's not 50. <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, they have the same amount yeah, of green hair though. Roy Jones Jr. Born in 1969, makes him 51 years old as well. But you do have to remember that Roy Jones did uh, stay in the professional boxing till 2018. So he was already a little older. He's one of the best fighters that there had been because he was started as a junior middleweight or junior, yeah, right, junior middleweight. And he went all the way up to heavyweight to win a championship. So, and he did stay in the profession till 2018. So he's not far removed from it. So. Uh, but I still think that Mike Tyson is putting in a little extra work there. Even if he's rusty, right? Carlos, what do you think on that? I agree with that. I think uh, Mike Tyson, even though he's 54 and, and Roy Jones 51, I think uh, Mike Tyson does have the advantage still. I think what made Roy Jones good <clears throat> wasn't really his power. It was his timing, his, his speed. And I think that goes with age. And I think I've seen Mike Tyson still has his power. And that's what made him good. So I think that's going to be the factor right there. I don't know how serious they're going to take this. It's an exhibition. I don't know. Can you knock people out in an exhibition? I don't know how this works. 
Well, you know that everybody has a plan until they get in the face, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. well, so that was Mike Tyson's line there. Okay. Cool. I know. That's my favorite quote. Yeah. Yeah. My favorite quarterback is actually Dak Prescott. He plays for the Cowboys. He's the best quarterback in the NFL. You know, you know, Carla, I think I agree. Think he's better than Tom Brady right now? I think he's way better than Tom Brady. Like, there's not even close. Not even close. He's in his prime right now. He deserves forty million dollars, at least. Yeah, that's <laughs> per game. Per game, <laughs> at least. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I think, I think both fighters, Mike Tyson and and uh, Roy Jones, their last three fights were both terrible. So I mean. Um, but it seems like they're both taking this very seriously. Mike Tyson is more of a power puncher, so I think he's got the advantage. You know, as he, you know, he'll probably. I'm pretty sure he'll. Uh, it just depends on like like you guys are saying. It's an exhibition. Let's see how how hard they actually hit each other and go at each other. So that'll be interesting. And I think that the proceeds of the fight. I think Mike Tyson is donating everything to charity. Yeah. Wow. And and I believe that uh, Mike Tyson cannot go have speed. Mike Tyson is going to hit you hard because he's going to hit you hard. He's Mike Tyson and he's mean in the ring and that's what got him there. That's and a good point because Mike Tyson, he might start off slow, but as soon as he gets punched in the face, I think he's going to pick it up and and go. Yeah. Maybe he'll bite his ear. <laughs> I think they're putting a mask on him, man. <laughs> maybe. 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 You know, hey, Charlie, I had a quick question for you. I know... Uh, next year, what do you think? Spurs, Lakers, what do you think? The Lakers are the best team out there. I mean, there's not even going to be close. I mean, Repeat. the Lakers, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. LeBron seems to be taking care of himself. He could probably play another 15 years. I think he's rubbing off on you, definitely. Yeah. What's that? Say it one time. I think Gilbert's rubbing off on you. Uh, I, I some oh. something's going on. I, I think know. so. I think all three of you guys have something. So a lot, lot, too much love going on right now towards me. Okay. But uh, and last question for Carlos also. Uh, Kurt Cousins. You think he's he's top notch, or you think? You no, know, Kurt Cousins is actually the silver arm because Dak Prescott is the gold. Dak Prescott is the golden arm, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I, I think uh, Jack is number one here. The Lakers are going to take it all for years to come. Um, you know, we have uh, Gilbert's my idol for sure. Yeah, LeBron found the fountain of youth, and that guy is just an animal. It's amazing. It's amazing. Guys, oh. this is a, a fun sports talk in the man cave. And uh, I hope next week goes a little bit differently. We'll see how that yes. goes. Yes, yes. <laughs> See how it goes. A, a right. lot differently. All right, man. Y'all take care. <laughs> like, subscribe. We'll see you later. See ya. Peace.